What's up everybody? This is Ryan from Refer.io with a quick video on how to increase your chances of getting a job. This is a, a great intro video that kind of introduces a bunch of other videos and content that uh, we'll be releasing after this. Um, but the goal of today give you a really high level introduction to how to increase your chances and kind of our approach to it. Um, but let's start with the mo probably the most important question you should ask in watching this. Why should you listen to me? There's a ton of people out on the internet trying to tell you different ways or different approaches to increasing your chances of getting hired. So let me tell you a little bit about me. Along with, along with working here at Refer, I also run a very fast growing software company and specifically we build hiring software. We've been on the Inc. 5000 list for the past five years in a row on a 12 year old company. Pretty impressive, especially when you consider that we're completely bootstrapped, which means we didn't take anybody's venture capital money. But what's great about this is that we work with over 4,000 organizations to help them manage their hiring process. Along with working with all these companies, I also go throughout the United States and I speak at SHRM events. SHRM is the Society of Human Resource Managers. So think about it like a, a big club of HR people. I go there and try to help them understand how to improve their hiring process, which gives me a ton of insight into exactly, as, as well as data, into exactly how these employers are going about screening and selecting the people that they actually end up hiring. So lots of information to be able to take and put together and kind of reverse from a job seeker's perspective to give you guys some insights into exactly how to increase your chances of being hired. So I'm going to give you kind of three main steps. Number one is chart your potential career paths. I really, really love this quote. If you don't know where you're going, then any road you take will get you there. I think a lot of job seekers kind of take that same approach. They just kind of take whatever job comes to them and they're not very deliberate in, in choosing the path they want to go about in, in identifying where they want to get to and then selecting that road that will get them there. Sometimes it's because you really don't know. You don't know what kind of job you want or you don't know what uh, opportunities are out there. More importantly, you may not know the right path to take. So there's a couple important pieces with this. Number one, find a few role models. Now, these certainly are role models if you're an entrepreneur like me, um, but if you're, you know, want to become a CFO or want to become a controller or want to become a medical assistant or anything like that, there's tons of data out there online and, and we'll produce some videos that will help you with it, whether it's LinkedIn or Indeed resume databases. You can go out and find people who currently today have the job that you want five or six or 10 years from now, and you can take and chart their path, right? And so that's the goal. Identify some people that you're like, in the future, I want to be that person, and then take and chart their career paths. What you're looking for is what did they study? What certifications did they get? What skills do they have? What jobs and work history do they have that led them into the job that you want to get in the future? So that's number one, right? You want to be very deliberate about knowing where you want to go. Number two, you want to be deliberate when you're applying for jobs. I think one of the big mistakes a lot of job seekers make is they, I'll, I'll call it carpet bombing, right? They take their resume and they just blast it out to everybody. They'll apply for five or 10 or 20 or 100 jobs at a time. Indeed, ZipRecruiter, the job boards are making it easier and easier for you to just apply to one job after another after another. The problem with that is number one, the information you're giving to those employers isn't unique for that job. But secondly, every other job seeker also has that same ability, which means there's hundreds of job seekers applying for these jobs, which means your application gets buried under a big pile of unqualified candidates. So you don't want to do that. Instead, you want to act more like a sniper than a bomber. You want to really drill down and stalk your prey. You want to figure out exactly you know, what they're looking for and why they're looking for it, what current employees look like, who does the hiring, uh, information about the company, their competitors, their industry, what they're trying to accomplish, their culture, their values, all of this information. Now you might stop me right there and go, oh my goodness, I don't have time to do that for every job I apply to. That's totally fine. You could try and do both, right? Take your five or 10 places that you really, really want to work, kind of your dream job at the dream organization. Act like a sniper in those instances. Really, really focus and be very deliberate in understanding you know, the company and the information, all those types of things. And then take all the other jobs and go ahead and blast those all you want. Carpet bomb the crap out of those other employers. But the ones that you really, really want to be delivered about, the ones that you honestly just would do anything to get those jobs, well, that's just it. You need to be willing to do anything to get those jobs. So if you want something in life, you need to be proactive. And that's really what I'm talking about here is proactively 
creating the situation where you will get lucky. A lot of life is about luck, but luck for an entrepreneur like me or luck for most people will tell you, it's about being prepared and being in the right spot at the right time to be able to, to take advantage of a situation. And so that's really what I'm talking about, about drilling in and understanding these companies and understanding what they're looking for, being a sniper, right? Finally, and these are, we've got five steps for this. Once we've decided we've, you know, where we want to work and what career path we want, then we need to increase our chances of actually getting offered a job, right? Getting an offered a job means we get through the initial screening. It means we get through the initial phone screen. It means we get through the interview process and we get to the point where we actually get an offer extended to us. So I have five steps for that. I'm going to brush through them really quickly and then we'll, we'll have additional videos that you can drill down into each of these areas. But number one, not to be overlooked, be prepared. Get a notebook. I know this sounds super old school. Get a notebook. Build a, a page or a section for each of these five or ten employers that you really want to engage with and take a ton of notes. The goal here is to be able to have all your information in one spot, to be able to have it look nice enough that you can walk into an interview with it because you want to be prepared. You want to have notes about the company, about you know their competitors, their how they fit in the market, their business model. You want to know what they're looking for. You want to have prepared certain questions that you're going to ask them during the interview. So be prepared. Get a notebook so that you can record this information in it. Number two will be do your research. Uh, I've got a whole video on this, but in a nutshell, you want to really dig into what the employer is looking for. You want to look at not just the job ad. You want to research their website, their competitors, their industry. You want to go and research who's most likely to be interviewing you for this job and know about them and where they are. You're going to have a ton of research to do. Again, that's why I'm saying instead of applying to 100 jobs, you want to shrink this down to five or 10 jobs where you're like, man, I'd do anything to get that job because we're going to have to do some research about the company. Number three, you need to network. And networking is two parts. Um, you might be surprised, but if you look at the quantity of applicants coming from a job board, it's actually quite staggering for the employer. But if you look at the people they actually hire, it's not job seekers from job boards, it's employee referrals and customer referrals. People who are referred to them. There's a reason when we get to number four why this is, but it's something that's extremely important for you to understand. The number one way to get a job is get an interview. And the most the, the most impressive or the most uh, likely way to get an interview is to be a referral when you apply, not to come from a job board. So the way that you become a referral is you're going to have to get out and network and specifically you're going to have to network with potential employees at that company so that they'll refer you to HR, refer you to the hiring manager of the job. The second part of network is you need to build your network, not just so that you have access to these people so you hear about openings, which is extremely important, but also because your network is publicly exposed when it comes to LinkedIn, meaning when an employer goes to check you out to look and see you know, what all is on your resume versus what's out there in the public, they're going to land on your LinkedIn profile page, and if you only know a couple people, that's kind of a red flag that you don't have that powerful of a network. People who are high quality candidates have good networks on LinkedIn. So that's number three, network. Number four, and this is probably the biggest takeaway, is you've got to be a compelling product. So let me explain what this means. I believe that you as a job seeker are a product. You're trying to sell yourself and market yourself to a potential employer. You need to approach your life like you're a product. Now why does that matter? Well, because instead of just learning about what people are telling you job seekers should do, Knowing that you're a product that you're trying to market or sell yourself to means you can get out into the marketing and sales world and look at some of the ways that those people go about selling something to a consumer, right? In, in, a, in a book, I'm a product guy, right? So I'm an entrepreneur who's also heavily focused in marketing and product development. And there's three main things that I try to do when it comes to marketing my product and, and developing a product for consumers. Number one, I want my product to be, com to be unique. Think about it, I grew up on a dairy farm, and if you think about milk, it's all the same. It's considered a commodity. And if everything's all the same, then all that we do is look for the cheapest one to buy. Trust me, you don't want to look like every other job seeker, or they're going to decide to hire the one that they can get for the cheapest price. You need to be unique, which means you need to look different than everybody else. Now number two is super important. You don't want to just be different to be different. You need to be different in a compelling way. Meaning the uniqueness about you makes, needs to make the employer want to hire you, to be attracted to you as a job seeker. So you don't want to just stand out from the crowd by you know, having a big tattoo on your forehead. You want to stand out from the crowd by being more qualified or bringing more value to them than the other job seekers in the area. It needs to be compelling. 
And then the last one is super, super important and kind of goes back to the networking thing. You need to be credible. So I'm getting ready to fly to Toronto, Canada tonight, and there's two main purchases I made going up there. Number one, I picked an airline to travel on. I really didn't care what airline I went on. All I cared about was price because air travel to me is a commodity, right? I just wanted to know how could I get there on the right timing with the right price. I really didn't care much about the airplane because they're kind of all the same. I wanted to get directly to Toronto from Las Vegas where I'm flying from. Number two, I got a hotel. Now the hotel's not a commodity, right? For the hotel, I wanted specific things. I'm gonna be staying there for four days. I want specific amenities. I want a specific uh, location access to where I was going as far as where I would be spending my time in Toronto. Um, and I looked for credibility. I read reviews. I didn't just want to, to listen or believe what the hotel told me. I actually wanted to hear what real customers had said about me. So take the same thing, flip it upside down and think about yourself as a job seeker. Are you unique? right? Or do you just sound like everybody else? Is your uniqueness compelling? Are you unique in ways that makes an employer uh, view you as valuable to their organization and to the job? And number three, and most important, is that credible? Do you, whether that's references, whether it's your LinkedIn network, whether it's people posting and saying great things about you on LinkedIn, whether it's your, your referral letters or the fact that you are a referral at all, being an employee referral makes you more credible than somebody just applying from Indeed. Having somebody vouch for you makes you more credible. What your resume looks like makes you more credible. So are you presenting a unique, compelling, and credible product that will sell itself to this employer. And then finally, number five, you gotta prepare for that interview and it kind of all this comes together in the interview stage. Can you kill the way you engage with these people? Are you prepared? Do you look the part? Do you act the part? Do you show up on time? Uh, that little notebook there is gonna be there for a reason because you're gonna be able to review it before you walk into that interview and you're going to be able to crush the interview. So kill the engagement, be prepared for that interview. So the next steps, well, this is just our intro. We have a bunch of other videos and webinars coming out. So you're well, feel free to watch those videos and, and consume that information. Number two, email me. Email me ryan at alert.refer.io. Make sure you get those dots in there, right? Very important. Ryan at alert.refer.io. Or if you receive email alerts from us, just hit reply and that, that will send it right to me. Tell me your questions, tell me your comments, tell me the things you're struggling with, because I can use that information to go out and research and bring you the video content you need. And then of course, if you're getting job alerts from us, click on those links, that's how we make money. But also, if the links and the jobs that are in those emails aren't, aren't a good fit for you, reply back and tell us what would be a good fit. Maybe we need to change your location or change the job title that, that we're using to, to identify jobs that are a good fit for you. So hit reply. We actually read all of those emails that go to ryanalert.refer.io. So hit reply back to us. Tell us what we can do to better serve you and to help you find a better job. But thanks for watching and have a great day.